there's a, a couple of things I want to uh, want to do. I want to take a, a step back into PVT. Um, no. Um, the uh, the uh, problem four. I think there were some questions or, or issues about that. Several people have asked about. Um, and I think in particular, I'll, I'll uh, uh, try to comment on this BO versus the saturated BO. versus RS plot, right? And presumably these points should kind of fall in a straight line, right? And then if you extrapolate that straight line, then you got something that was not equal to one at zero RS. Is that correct? Everybody saw the same thing. So I'm going to call this uh, the 1.0x number. <laughs> okay, it's 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 the BO saturated BO at one atmosphere, and it's going to be equal to 1.0x. And I want to talk about why. And what is the OX? Okay. Um, so first of all, what is the BO? The BO is equal to the volume of an oil at a certain temperature. Uh, in this case, it's at the bubble point of that of that uh, oil because it's saturated BO. And um, basically, at a certain composition, it's, it's which is at a certain RS value. Okay. Um, so it's this volume of, of of a saturated oil over the volume. If you take that oil through some process at the surface, you end up with a surface oil volume coming from that oil, right? That's that's the BO. And if if it's greater than one, that says that that oil is shrinking, right? Then we're getting shrinkage. So why do we get shrinkage? How can we get shrinkage? So we're going from point to point. What is changing up here? Okay. Well, the RS is changing, obviously. Accordingly, the bubble point is changing, meaning that the pressure is getting lower. So the pressure is changing, and the RS is changing. Whereas the temperature, that's constant. 103 degrees C, or whatever it is, reservoir temperature, whatever that temperature is. But the temperature down here, the standard condition temperature and pressure. So this is 15.5 degrees C, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, always. Okay. So let's just let's just think about if if. If, if the RS doesn't change, okay, let's say that, let's look at what's the, what's the effect of, or what's this ratio going to be, how should I put this? If only temperature changes, what will this ratio be? Okay, well, this temperature, what's going to be? Well, if only the temperature changed, you're going to go from 100 degrees C to 15 degrees C, okay? And we're saying that the RS doesn't change, the bubble point, we're just saying what's the oil volume ratio? 
Well, what happens to oil when it goes from 100 degrees C to 15 degrees C? The easiest way for me to think about it is that if I start at 15 C and I heat it up, I know it gets bigger, it swells. Molecules are moving around faster, higher temperature. Molecules move around faster, you need more volume, okay? So you're gonna get a higher volume at 100 degrees C and a lower volume at 15 degrees C. So that ratio has to be greater than one. If you hold the temperature and the RS constant and only change the pressure, right? Only change the pressure. What should the BO value be? If we take an oil at 100 bar and we bring it to 1 bar, what's going to happen to the volume of the oil? Everything else being the same. Hmm? It expands again, right? So the the pressure effect will make it expand. Um, what will the BO be then? Less than one or greater than one? Less than one. Okay. If RS changes, RS is getting lower. What's going to happen to the volume? What's the ratio going to be? The volume is going to decrease because you lose mass. Okay, so basically, we're most of the shrinkage is coming from RS loss. Okay, that's that's the number one reason for the shrinkage. And the second reason is that temperature goes down to sixty. Fair enough. Goes down to fifteen degrees C. Temperature to 15.5, okay? So it's thermal crimping or shrinkage, okay? That's the two reasons. So as the RS is like not going to zero, so you end up with this oil that's got no gas in solution. The ratio is still going to be greater than one because of this thermal. So this, this is what's giving us the 1.0x here. It's just the pure thermal expansion or contraction. Thermal contraction. And that number can be anywhere from can be 1.01 to 1.1x, meaning quite a bit. And it's going to be bigger the higher the temperature as the temperature goes up and as the API, meaning that the oil becomes lighter. Okay, the API goes up, you'll have more thermal effect. Okay? Yeah? But isn't that not supposed to be at the constant temperature? Right, but it's always related, it, it's always giving you a volume at 15.5 at C. So, it, so it, it, all of these points are, are for a given temperature, that's right, 105 degrees C, for example, including that last one. But if you take 105 degrees C with no gas in solution down to 15.5 C, then that ratio is going to be greater than one. So that was, I don't know, maybe the problem asked you to discuss this. I don't remember. Okay. Temperature is dominant. At the at at the zero RS, the only yeah, it's it's kind of like yeah, that's right. It's it's. It's why even with, with this RS, in other words, you're, you're, you don't have any, you're going from an oil that's basically saturated at 105 degrees C and one atmosphere, and you're just taking that down to 15, there's no gas released in that, in that last step, there's no gas released. So, so yeah, it's the thermal effect. Well, I think if you look at the um, the one point oh x number is a big number. It's a very important number. Okay, why? Because 
all of these places that were metering oil, sellable oil, were metering it. It's called fiscal metering. This may be at a variable temperature. Okay? Saudi Arabia, it's 100 and whatever it is, four. It's hot. And North Sea, it's, you know, I don't know, minus 20 C, the metering. So the metering is going on, but you're not getting paid for the metering vol metered volume at this temperature. You have to convert the volume of oil metered at the temperature metering. Of course, it's always going to be one atmosphere, pretty much, okay? To the volume of oil here at 60 degrees Fahrenheit times... I didn't look at the, it was 40, it was 40, I didn't look at it, it's over 40. <laughs> I'm still happy per, per barrel, okay? That's the number you multiply the price with. That's what they're going to pay you. So that number, if it's 1.06 or 1.03, is like, in one million barrel tanker, is like more money than probably you and I will make in our lives, right? So it's a lot of money. So that thermal correction, which is used all the time, and I think if you look in, on the internet, I, I don't do this kind of thing, but if you look on the internet for the thermal correction equation, there's probably one out there as a function of API and temperature. I'm, I'm almost sure. I, I could be wrong, but look it up and, and let me know, and then I can share it. Uh, Chris, yeah. Could that line in theory across uh, one exactly? I don't think so because I don't. I think any oil, no matter how heavy it is, I think any oil will shrink. I mean, if the reservoir temperature was less than 15 degrees C. Now, you're maybe thinking of the trend of gas coming out of solution. Maybe the trend could intercept something less than one. I I, I don't know. I I don't think so. I think the trend will be kind of given by the fact that you're at a higher temperature. I think it's going to be pointing towards this effect. But can the pressure conditions sort of make it drop to close to one or below one? I, I don't think the pressure, I, I don't think so. Uh, I really don't think so. For water formation volume factor, it can be less than one or greater than one because of the pressure, temperature, compressibility, yeah. So the, for water, it can be. So maybe for an oil. Maybe for a heavy oil it could be, yeah. So I'm not going to say for sure. It, 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 it's certainly possible for water, because if we look at the, the, the monograph for um, Okay. This is our friend, Dr. Standing. Let's see if we can... Okay, formation volume factor of water, function of pressure, and as a function of uh, temperature with and without natural gas. And you can see that it actually, uh, at low enough temperatures, you can actually, the pressure effect will make it less than one. So it can be slightly less than one. But the, the pure water, that's just pure compressibility effect. So what you can see is that the temperature effect is bigger at 200 Fahrenheit, at 115 Fahrenheit. But now, down here, the, the 5,000 pound pressure drop um, expansion of the water is overcoming the 100 degree to 60 degree temperature comp compression. All right, was there anything else on the problem of uh, problem four that you all need to want to ask? I guess it's too late to ask because it's hard to turn in, but. Um, it's okay. okay.
Now, Matthias mentioned earlier that you guys are used to having the student assistant having a, a problem session, which is correct. And most of the professors, they, they love it because they don't have to show up. Okay? I always show up if I'm here. And the idea is that you're a, you should be able to ask questions about any of the problems, and if you have them, then we'll take away from the time of the lectures. That's, that's my philosophy. It's not the standard way of doing things. Maybe you don't feel as much comfort level with doing it with me as with a student assistant, which I also understand. Um, but um, uh, it's just the way I do it. I mean, I don't let any of my student assistants, you know, take over my hours in a sense. It's just, but, uh, so I think you either have to kind of, you know, come ask the questions during the break, and then I'll take time from the lecture. Um, or you have to lasso the four student assistants into special time, their time or a, a common time. And if they say they're not going to do it, then you have to tell me, because then they're in trouble. Okay? Now, they may want to do it outside of the normal hours, okay? They may, which means you've got more hours than, because you've got me, and then you've got them also. But you guys can demand a special uh, problem session with the student assistants if it's needed, okay? But you have to kind of, you know, you have to be like the labor worker. You have to organize and, you know, hit the tables a little bit. Um, but but I, I am very happy to, to try to address any of these issues and to take time from it, okay? If we never make it to the gas rate equation, that, so be it. All right. So now I just want to round off this liquid oil rate equation to the final form that you'll see in 99% of the books, okay? We're missing this one, this one asterisk. Sometimes you get a lower perm damage near the well bore because of the dam drillers, okay? So that's, that's what we're going to talk about and possibility of even getting something that's better than the Mother Nature rock if we stimulate. And that skin term So this is gonna, I'm going to say it's the final, although you probably will never, never see the final one. But uh, the final pseudo steady state oil rate equation Did anybody do this for metric? Standard cubic meters? No. Okay. Is that simple? This is the dimensionless skin. And what it is doing, it's reflecting a pressure drop, okay? And we've got the magnitude. We talked about it, it could be positive or negative. Um, so skin greater than zero is damage, and skin less than zero is what we call stimulation. The magnitude of a damaged skin can be in the hundreds. The first wells drilled in the troll gas had skin factors in order of magnitude 200. 300. So it can range from, from zero as damage up to several. Okay. The stimulation skin 
Well, first, a good stimulation skin, meaning that it's a successful, you get a raise, the production engineer, you guys are looking for jobs, okay? Minus three to minus five is a successful stimulation skin. And most of the Equifisk wells, if you look at, if you go to work for ConocoPhillips, you look in the well records, you'll see test after test showing a minus four-ish skin. Okay? That's standard. Okay. Um, for stimulation. It has to be less than this, right? Because if it's not, <laughs> the thing goes viral, as they say, cyberspace. It goes to infinity, right? So it has to be bigger than I'm sorry, it has to be not less than that, but how, how should we write this? The absolute value has to be less than that. Okay? We can't drive the denominator to zero. Doesn't work. So there's a limit. Well, it can't. It can't. Um, and and what happens is that, well, it just it 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 can't because, um, so there's an the original the original introduction the original skim was introduced by I think it was a couple of guys name of. Um, it was by Hawkins. There was a, probably the first and maybe the best reservoir engineering textbook ever written was by Kraft and Hawkins from Louisiana State University. Okay, this is a classic reservoir engineering book. And this is the same Hawkins. And basically what he said is that if you have a, your well bore here, and then you've got a, so basically you've got RW, and then you've got an R1 with a permeability K1, and then the rest of it you've got out to RE, you've got your background permeability. So it's, it's called a radial composite model. So you've got K out here, inside here you've got K1, and of course this is your well bore. That's a hole. Infinite permeability. Okay? So this is called, a, a, and that was his model. And with that model, then you get the following equation for skin is uh, um, K over K1 minus 1 log R1 over RW. Okay. Is this wrong or is this easy? Is it? Yeah. Okay, that's the equation. So if you stimulate the well and you let, so, so K1 less than K is damage and K1 greater than K is stimulation. But in the limit, as K1 goes to infinity, that's a great stimulation in a sense, then your skin is limited to minus log R1 over RW. Okay? That's the limit. Okay. So, so this, is, this is the, the equation uh, for skin, including skin.
if we go back up to here, to this picture, let's say that this is our reservoir, and we introduce this positive skin. So the the hawk the 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 um, um, what was the name of the book? I call it Crafton Hawk. The Hawkins formula for the equation is basically it's saying that you've got a a region out to R one, okay. And if it's a lower permeability, then effectively it's saying that, well, where we've got K, we've got this profile here, a, per, a pressure drop, for a given rate. But that if you have a lower K, in this region here, you've got K1, and out here you've got K. So the pressure drop would look like this according to Darcy's equation applied to, to both sections. It would look like that. Okay. And this would be your, this would be your, what we call ideal. That would be our zero skin bottom of flowing pressure, right? This would be our actual our actual bottom of flowing pressure. And the difference here is our delta P skin. PWF ideal minus PWF with the skin. All right? So it's adding this pressure drop. And physically, this is one way to see it, that you've got flow through a higher perm rock, flow through a, the same flow, the same steady state flow, through a lower perm rock with this additional pressure drop. So that's But the way, okay, that's with this Hawkins model, okay, where we've got that. But the way we normally use it is just in this equation like this. We're basically saying that delta P skin occurs at RW. There's not a range, you know. The, the way we talk about it is that the pressure drop follows that whole line all the way down to here, and then it goes down like that. Okay, it doesn't matter, but it's just a different interpretation of it. Okay, it's like you move all the perm damage to the RW to, at the wellbore. So it's just two different ways of looking at it. And basically, we never know what that permeability is, and that's why we we do it this way. We just know that there's a difference between what, out here and and there. Okay. So the way this equation is, is written, it's essentially saying that that pressure drop, PW ideal, perfect, for skin of zero, minus the actual PWF, if we do have a skin, that it's all occurring right at the wellbore. Hence the term skin, which is thin, right? That's why we call it skin. Increase the flow in the reservoir? Well, well I, I'm not quite sure I followed. Uh, in the equation for Q? Hit this uh, one here? Yeah, this one. Okay. You see, if uh, the skin causes the PWF to drop, right? So that means Q should get bigger. Well, 
No, yeah. So, so what this is saying is that um, yeah, that's the wrong way to look at it. So I'm going to try to. Try to um, let's say your permeability is 10 millidars in the rock, okay? And you're making 100 barrels per day. For 100 psi pressure drawdown. So we're making 100 barrels per day, 100 psi uh, real pressure drop, okay? For a well that has no skin, okay? So the completion guys, the completions did their job. So after the fix, it's making 100 barrels per day for 100 psi pressure drop and no skin. We cleaned the well up. Before they cleaned it up, there was a skin of eight plus eight, okay? Let's say that that term there is eight as well, okay? And before we got the well cleaned up, I say we had a skin of eight. So to make my 100 barrels per day, when it has the skin, how much pressure drop do I need? Y'all can think about it. We've got a well. It's all cleaned up. It's making 100 barrels per day, 100 PSI. We got QO 100. Uh, this is, we're saying skin is zero, successful cleanup. Production engineer cleaned up the driller's mess. The pressure drop, reservoir pressure minus PWF. 100 PSI. Okay. We're screening the skin zero. But now we look before cleanup. And Curtis says that the skin was plus eight. Okay. He also says that this term, which we found before last hour, that this term is always around, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. I'm just going to make the assumption that this is eight. Okay. So up here in the equation, That's equal to 8. That's in the denominator of the rate equation. So that's the equation we're going to be using. So before the cleanup, if we wanted to produce 100 barrels per day,
after the cleanup, we got our 100 barrels per day. from 100 PSI drawdown, where the skin's zero. So you only have the log RERW term, eight. Before the, before the cleanup, we had eight plus eight. So, to get our 100 barrels per day before the cleanup, how much pressure drop did we need? If you look at the two equations, to compensate this doubling below, you have to add double above. So here you need a, twice the pressure drop versus here we had 100 psi. So that's the way to look at it. I don't know how to explain it better, but if you have a positive skin, you need more pressure drop to get the same rate. Which same rate? The rate if it didn't have a skin. Okay. okay. Or you can say for 100 PSI pressure drop before the completion, what would its rate be? What would the rate be if I had 100 PSI draw down before the cleanup job. If you only had 100 PSI here, what would the rate be? 50. Okay? So there's two ways to look at it. For the same pressure drop as a clean well, you get less rate if you've got a skin. If you got the same rate, you have to have more drawdown if you've got a skin. Remember what I told you early, the first lecture, I think? The more pressure drop, the more cost of any field de development. Pressure drop any and everywhere basically will lead to more expensive development. And that's why you want to get rid of the skin. That's why we hire petroleum engineers, production engineers, to clean up the driller's mess. It's a factor of two. It's a factor of two here. And that's just for a skin of eight. Now, I told you about the troll field, the gas, where it, it was 200. Okay? How could it be? How did it even produce the well? Well, because the permeability is so damn high that the pressure drop to produce the race they pr produced in the initial test probably a million cubic meters per day, was like one bar if there was no skin, but it was 25 bar when it had this 200 skin, right? So that's what. So the pressure drop in, in PSI, or in this case PSI, you can calculate it from the skin here. With that. I think that term there. That's it. I have to be a little bit careful here. It doesn't look right. Let me just try. Let me try this one more time, since it's on video. 
all of my enemies are laughing at this point. That's okay. So delta P is going to be scan times QO mu OBO one forty one point two over KH. I think that one's right. Don't have any upper limit, like we have the lower limit. No, well, it's the, yeah. The upper limit of damaged skin is what the initial pressure or average pressure. I mean, it has to be less than the the average reservoir pressure. And then this is kind of like a preparation for those of you who decide to become uh, pressure transient and analysis people, you know, the, the math mathematicians out there who want to work with Tom or somebody. The pressure drop due to skin during a shut-in. What is a shut-in? Rate is zero, right? What is that pressure drop equal to from this equation? Zero. Okay. That fact is how we're able to determine the magnitude of skin. Because what we do is that we look at the pressure drop when the well is flowing with a rate, then we shut the well in, and we look at the the pressure response of that. Well, that new pressure response during the shut-in is not affected at all by the skin. So you're able to difference out the pressure drop due to skin because of that. Okay. We have no excuses on Thursday but to get the gas, <laughs> unless you got more PVT questions.